Okay, so now that we've gone through sort of the front end of the work for today, it's probably time to start looking at how we actually calculate these things out in practice. So the first bit that we need to look at is to actually come out with the taxable income number. And the way we do this is we're going to start with accounting profit. So the, the starting point is going to be whatever net profit before tax is. And that's your accounting profit with all the various expense items calculated under the Australian accounting standards, all your revenue items calculated under the Australian accounting standards, and you come up with whatever that outcome is. Now, as we've discussed, a lot of these things or many of these things can't be used as deductions for tax or some of them may not even be included as revenue for tax. So we need to, between here and, and taxable profit, we need to make all these various adjustments, stripping out expense effects, um, stripping out revenue effects, and then bringing into, bringing into the calculation the taxable effects of these. So where there's a tax deduction, we obviously take that away. Where there's income, where there is, where there is income which can get included as taxable income but um, wasn't included in profit and loss, we need to bring that into account as well. That's making me hungry. Now, once we've done that, I'll, I'll have a quick look at this slide and then we'll go to the numbers. Uh, and the reason for that is, I mean, I'd do this side by side if we had a split screen, but we don't. So the taxable income multiplied by the tax rate is your tax payable. So this is, in effect, what you owe the government. And we record that by debiting income tax expense and credit current income tax liability. Um, or what we saw earlier with the four companies that we had to look at, that's their current tax liability that you see in the current section of their um, liabilities on the balance sheet. So, document reader. So what we have here is, we don't worry about the second bit for the moment, and this won't be included. So what we have here is some information, accounting information about their profit. So they've got gross profit of various things, they've had a number of expense items, and they've got net profit before tax. In an exam or in the tutorial type work, you may see this presented like this, you may see it just written out in text. However it is, you'll get information about this sort of stuff. Um, in addition, if we turn over the page, we have some additional notes which are going to be useful for what we're trying to do. Which is a little bit small. Okay, so all administration and salary expenses incurred have been paid as at the year end. Uh, none of the LSE, LSE, none of the long service leave expense has been paid, um, not deductible until paid. Warranty expenses were accrued and at year end there were actual payments of $10,000. Insurance was prepaid to the amount of 40. Actual amounts paid are allowed as a tax deduction. Amounts received from sales, including those on credit terms, taxed at the time of the sale. Plant depreciated for five years for accounting and four years for tax. And we have a tax rate of 30%. So, I'm going to show this, you, show this to you in two ways, just so we can, and so we can see both. Now, gross profit, all the sales revenue that went into that, um, all the taxation happened at that point in time. Um, so we do actually have, for tax purposes, that's, we're going to start at that point, so that's okay. Now the administrative expenses, there's no difference. Those were paid and we know they were paid, so that is actually going to be the same number. Salary expenses, ditto, so we can kind of leave that alone. Now long service leave expenses. Even though we had $30,000 of long service leave expenses, we had no long service leave paid. So 
So that would be, actually, they're non-paid, so there is no tax deduction from that. So that's why we've got zero there. Warranty expenses, we only had $10,000 of warranty expenses paid. So we only have 10,000 sitting there as a tax deduction. Depreciation expenses, we had 120 on this side, which is 600,000 divided by four, sorry, my bad, divided by five. And on this side, it's, if I can write very neatly, $600,000 divided by four. Um, so that's the four years. So the, the depreciation expense is a little bit higher, um, not much, but a little bit higher. Insurance expense is based on when you were paid, not on accrued and looking at what you've actually used. So that's based on paid. And if you were to add all these up, we end up with 535, take the difference, and that's what we get. Um, so kind of like insurance expense, just a, a real world example, a lot of banks, um, you know, and I've seen this with say things like margin lending, will say, look, if you pay your interest bill up front before the end of, you know, if we're coming up to the end of the financial year for 2013, it's sort of mid-July, they say, if you pay the next 12 months of your, of your loan, even though for, for an accounting point of view, you won't actually be using that, there won't be an ex interest expense until next year, you get to claim the tax deduction when you pay that, pay that interest. So kind of similar here, even though they haven't used all of that insurance expense. All of it comes through as a tax benefit, sorry, as a tax deduction in the, in the actual year that you pay it. So we come down, we end up with 565. Now, if we go to the second page, we can actually relate this to how, <coughs> excuse me, we can relate this to the slides. So we've got profit before tax of 435. There's, in essence, all the accounting expenses which have differential impacts from accounting for accounting and for tax. So long service leave gets treated differently. So we need to add back all the long service leave expense. Warranty expenses gets treated differently. We add that back. Depreciation expense differently. We add that back. Insurance expense treated differently. We add that back. So we're just getting rid of all the accounting effects which don't work the same for tax. So we just we add them back because they were obviously used to decrease our profit down to 435,000. So once we've added them back, we then have to look at what the deductions that we can actually get are. And so again, we look at the same four things, long service leave, warranties paid, tax depreciation, and insurance paid. So these are your add back accounting expenses, and these are deducting, deducting your tax um, your tax deductions. So we've done that. Um, this example, we, you know, probably uh, probably an oversight from us. We didn't have any revenue items which were treated differently for accounting and for tax, and, and possibly we should actually do that just to make it more comprehensive. But you can see what's happening here. Now, two points I'd just like to make. The first is. it may not make a lot of sense, but include zeros when you're doing this. And what I mean by zeros is that guy right there. Don't leave that one out of the line just because it's got a zero. Not from a marking point of view, if it's there or it's not there, it doesn't affect the total amount. But why it helps is if you've added them back in, you need to have those things deducted and it means you're less likely to leave something out. So always have a match. You added back that expense, you take away that, that deduction. You add back that expense, you take away that deduction. So you should always have an even amount of additions and subtractions going on there. Um, it's less likely you're gonna make a mistake that way. And the second is don't use marginal effects. And so what I mean by that is depreciation on the plant is 120 add back. 
Um, tax depreciation is 150 you take away. You will get the same answer if you just take away 30. Like it will obviously mechanically work out the same. But it's more likely you're going to, I mean not more likely, well, there is a higher probability as to exactly how much higher, who knows, for some people it could be very slim, for some people it could be a lot, but there's a higher probability that something could go wrong by using the marginal effects. Separate them out and just work through it sequentially and it should be fine. Um, so we get to all that, we get to 465, we multiply it by the tax rate and that gives us a tax expense of 139,500. And if you feel free to double check that, but pretty sure it's right. Debit income tax expense, 139,500. Credit income tax payable, 139,500. So that's your current tax liability. You'll often see it as, so it's the current tax liability, um, CTL. And that picks up what you owe to the government. And to the extent that you've actually paid them, that tax liability disappears and obviously gets replaced by cash. Um, if we were a company which was not a reporting entity and didn't have to use the standards, um, that's where we would stop. But we need to go a little bit further because we need to take into account deferred tax effects in this case. 